Hey guys, in this Crew AI and RAG Deep Dive, you're gonna learn how to build crews that can scrape information from PDFs, YouTube videos, and the internet, and then use that information to automate your workflows. So here's an overview of everything you're gonna be learning in this tutorial. First, we're gonna do a quick recap of what is RAG, why it's important for Crew AI, and cover some real world examples. From there, we're gonna dive into the fun stuff and actually start coding up a basic RAG example with our crews to start interacting with the PDFs just so we understand the foundations. From there, we're gonna dive into a more advanced crew where we're gonna actually start interacting with multiple data sources like YouTube and the internet and start diving into some more of the advanced RAG techniques. And I'm also gonna show you guys a quick sneak peek of one of the newer Crew AI features called Replays and I think you guys are gonna love it. And don't worry, I know that might sound like a ton, but I'm gonna be walking you guys through everything step by step, and I'm also giving away all the source code completely for free, so you can just follow along in this video and then go download the source code afterwards. More information on that and the link down in the description below. Also, if you get stuck or if you have questions, you're in luck, because I've put together a free school community, so go ahead and post your questions over there to get support and meet other like-minded AI developers and hop on our weekly free coaching calls. We have close to almost 2,000 members now, and we'd love for you to come join the party. Go Go ahead and click that link down in the description below to learn more. But enough of all of that, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so let's quickly speed through what is RAG, why it's important with Crew AI, and then dive into some real world examples. And the reason why we're gonna go through this quickly is just cause I've done some additional videos that I'll point to in the cards above where I go into a lot more detail on what is RAG. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna speed through it. So what is RAG? Well, it's nothing more than a technique that allows us to retrieve relevant information from a special database called a vector store. And we're gonna pass that information we retrieve plus the initial request over over to one of our LLMs like OpenAI or Anthropic or one of the other models to generate a response. And the reason why RAG is such an important technique is because LLMs have a limited knowledge base and RAG allows us to feed in custom and new information to our LLMs and ultimately use that new information to answer questions or take actions. And like I mentioned just a second ago, if you want to learn more about RAG at a super low level, I definitely recommend checking out the RAG section of my LangChain Masterclass because in that beginner friendly video, I cover each part of the RAG process step by step. But for the purpose of this video, here's the main things you need to know when it comes to RAG. First off, we're going to end up taking information from PDFs, websites, video transcripts. So we're gonna grab all the text from those different sources, and then we're going to embed them. And that means nothing more than we're going to take that text and convert it over to numbers. And those numbers are just called embeddings, and they're just the numerical representation of text. And the reason why we wanna do that is because computers are great at comparing numbers, not great at comparing text. So once we have all of those embeddings, we're gonna save them over to a vector store so that we can search through these embeddings at a later point. And this is where the second part of this process comes in. This is where we want to actually start retrieving information and basically making queries to our vector store. So for example, if we had parsed a lot of information about Apple's latest reports, what we could do is we could ask questions such as who is the CEO of Apple? That, that would be our query. That query would get turned into an embedding. Then our vector store would go off and find the most similar embedding to that, you know, so hopefully a chunk of a PDF saying our current CEO is Tim Cook. It'll return that piece of text to us. And then what's awesome is that retriever will pass our query plus the information it retrieved over to an LLM and that LLM will mix that data together and generate a response for us. So that's how it works at a super high level. But the part that's super cool is if you're working with Crew AI, it simplifies all of this for you. So you don't actually have to understand any of that. And with Crew AI, all you have to do is just give your agents RAG tools and they'll do all the complicated work for you. So for example, if you wanted your agents to pull out all the information from a PDF, all you have to do is just grab the PDF search tool from the Crew AI tools library and give it to your agent. Or if you wanted your agent to pull out information from a YouTube search video, you could just give your agent the YouTube video search tool. And what's cool is you can actually give your agents a bunch of these different RAG tools together and the agents will be smart enough to pick out when they should use each tool. And if you wanna see all the available tools that are available for Cray AI, I'll actually put a link to it down in the description below so that you guys can check it out on your own time too. But let's quit talking about hypotheticals and dive into two real world examples where you would want to use Cray AI and RAG to automate some workflows. And the reason I wanna show you guys these is just to hopefully get the gears turning on your own so you can figure out how to use these technologies together to automate your own workflow. So let's go ahead and look at the first example. 
So for the first real world use case, what we could do is build a crew to help real estate investors speed up the process for getting quotes on a property that they want to invest in. So what I mean by that is if a real estate investor goes to buy a house, they need to first get an inspection report that lists out all the things that are wrong with a property. This inspection report usually takes 200 pages or so, but it goes into detail for everything that's wrong with the electrical, roofing, and everything else. So we could build a crew to go through each part of the inspection report and summarize and review all the issues and then draft up an email that we can quickly send over to a contractor. And that email can go ahead and call out all the things that are wrong with the different part of the house so we can you know send over to an AC company hey here's the AC it looks like it's this old we would love to get your feedback on it to see how much life it has left and to see how much it would cost to get a replacement so we could automate that entire process of reviewing the report all the way to sending out an email to specific contractors. Normally this process could take a few hours to review the entire report, but with crew, we could automate it down to a minute or two, which is insane how much more efficient we could be using these AI tools. And for the second example, let's imagine that we work at a super big company. And at this company, we usually subcontract out work because we're just too busy. And each one of these subcontractors, whenever we need a task done, will submit a bid to us describing how much it's gonna cost and their plan to complete the task. Well, what's crazy is these bids can be hundreds of pages long depending on how complex the project is. But what's cool is we could use Crew AI to analyze each one of the bids and put together a pro con list and what we can do is then eventually go through each one of the bids we get, look at the pros and cons, and then have another group of agents go off and actually pick a bid and explain why that's the appropriate bid that we should go for at our company. Normally analyzing all these documents, comparing numbers could take, you know, hours or weeks worth of manual labor to review, but with a crew, we could just have agents work on our behalf to get to the bottom of it and actually really justify why we should go with bid number two over the other bids. So this is another awesome example of why you could use RAG with Crew AI to get to and automate your workflows. But that's enough talking about RAG and Crew AI. Let's go ahead and dive into our first code example so you can see all of this in action. All right guys, welcome to the fun part where we're actually gonna start coding through this tutorial. And before we actually start coding out the two main examples, or the first one, which is gonna be the basic intro to RAG with Crew, and the second one, which is going to be the more advanced where you're gonna see some of the cooler tactics that you can do to really push the limits of using RAG and Cray AI together. I just wanna give you a quick overview of what you can expect to see in this project. So the first thing is I've went ahead and set up a huge readme that walks you through everything that's gonna be inside of this project. I walk you through exactly how you can go ahead and set up and install all the dependencies for this project, which really just comes down to setting up and using Poetry to Poetry install all the dependencies set inside of this project. If any of that's confusing, I definitely recommend going ahead and checking out my Crew AI basics tutorial and my updated tutorial on Crew AI, just so you guys can see how to set up your environment to run these crews. So definitely watch over there if any of that was confusing. But Outside of setting up your dependencies, what I wanted to just show you at a high level, we're mostly just gonna be focusing on setting up two crews, and as we go along, we're gonna be uh, substituting out different parts. To, we're gonna set up a foundation and then build on from there so that you guys can really understand how to use RAG in your own projects. So let's go ahead and start diving into the first example, which is gonna be just setting up a crew to interact with a PDF so you guys can see how everything works. So let's go ahead and dive into example number one. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on example number one, which is actually just going to be a home inspection crew. So this is a simplified version of the real world example that we talked about earlier in the video. And my favorite way to talk about crews is to actually just show them visually first. That way, when we hop over to the code here in just 0.1 seconds, it'll all make sense. So what we're trying to do is we are setting up a home inspection crew. And the purpose of this crew is one fold. It is to answer a question about a PDF that we pass in. So for example, we should be able to pass in questions about how does the electrical look inside of this home inspection report. And it should spit out a result saying, hey, all the wires throughout the house aren't covered properly. It's fraying, stuff like that. And it should spit us out a email describing what's going wrong so that we can pass it along to a contractor. And inside of the crew, which is the blue part that you see right here, there's really two things that are going on. First, we have a research agent whose sole purpose is to go off and answer the customer's question using the PDF that we specify, specifically the home inspection PDF. 
And the way we're going to be able to do that is to give this crew the PDF search tool, which we'll talk more about in just a little bit, but this is coming from crew AI tools. And that PDF search tool is going to just go off and do everything we talked about earlier when it comes to rag. So it's going to embed that PDF, set it up in a local vector store that we can access. That way, when we pass questions to this PDF search tool, it'll go off and do all the retrieval that we talked about earlier and give us an actual answer of like, hey, what is the status of this part of the home inspection report? And once we have performed the research task, which is going to be done by the research agent, we're going to pass all that information over to the second task in the crew, which is going to be answer the customer question. So this part's going to be, oh, small typo, my bad on that. But basically this is going to be done by the writer agent. And this is where we're just going to type up an email. And inside of this, we're just going to write up a response that we eventually can send over to the contractor. So as you can see, pretty straightforward crew. We're just going to have two major tasks and we're going to add in one tool that submits and pulls information from a PDF. And I just want to go ahead and show you what the PDF looks like, just in case you're not super familiar with home inspection reports. But as you can see, there's like 200 pages in this. You can see everything from like electrical. They're talking about, hey, this isn't properly labeled, all these wires, something's weird. So this is an example of what you could expect to see in an inspection report. And as you can see, this is a ton of information. It would take us forever to go through and manually look at everything. But hey, we have Crew AI to go through and search for all the errors for us and give us a nice email response of what we need to get fixed. All right, so let's go ahead and start heading over to the code and actually turning this visual diagram into a crew. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're officially in the code part, and what I'm going to do is walk you through this crew step by step, setting up our tools, agents, tasks, putting it all together, and then running it. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to go part by part, just so you can understand the basics. If you have questions, please go ahead and add those over to the school community or down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to help out. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that we're going to do inside of this crew that we are creating is we are going to set up our PDF search tool. Now, if you haven't seen this before, it's actually coming from Crew AI Tools. And so if you ever head over to the Crew AI Inc. repo over on GitHub, and I'll have a link to this down in the description below, you actually could go ahead and see all of the different tools that we have created for you guys. So you can see there's everything from working with CSV tools, exploring your local file directory, using Firecrawl, which we'll talk about later, talking with GitHub, working with Llama Index, using Selenium. There's so many tools that we've created for you guys so that you can easily start incorporating them with your agents to supercharge them. But in our case, what we're going to be doing is just using the basic PDF search tool, which is going to go through a PDF and automatically set up all that rag stuff that we talked about earlier in the video. So let me just show you how simple this is, just at a basic level. You, we're just gonna set up our tool and this will allow us to search through any PDF or we can be a little bit more explicit and say, hey, this is the exact PDF that I want you to use. And now you've just kind of seen like what tool we're using, what's available to you guys. Let's hop back to the code and actually run through the rest of it so you can see how it all connects together. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna set up two agents and two tasks. And this is all coming back to that drawing that we had earlier where we're setting up this blue part right here task and agents. So when it comes to the research agent, what we're trying to do is say like, hey, your job is to go through the PDF and give me all the relevant answers to whatever I pass to you. And we're just setting up a little bit of backstory just so we can provide this agent some purpose. And the other important part is we're saying delegation is false. The reason why we want to do this is we don't want our research agent talking to any of our other agents. It is solely their responsibility to go off and perform all the research. And the part that makes this agent super powerful is we gave it the PDF search tool, which means now this agent has access to this PDF that we've passed in. So whenever we tell this agent to go answer a question, it's going to go, okay, cool. I think I can answer this question. And what it's going to do is use the PDF search tool to go off and actually do the entire embedding process. And you'll actually, once you see it run, you're going to be blown away with how cool using this tool actually is. The next part, this research agent is going to be tied to the answer, answer customer question task. And this is where we're going to pass in and do some string interpolation and pass in the user's question and go off and answer this customer's question based on the home inspection PDF report. So that's how it's going to work. And we just expect a clear answer about what's in the report, answering the customer's question. And once we've done all that, the next part is we're going to have a professional writer agent and it's their job to basically just craft up a nice, clear email. And more specifically, we want this agent to write up an email that's going to be sent out to a contractor based on the researcher's finding. So we want this email to be super clear about what's going wrong. And we want to sign off this email with, hey, 
This is from Brandon Hancock and this is my real estate company. So this is just a cool way to actually speed up the email automation process. That way we can quickly send out all these emails to our contractors. Okay, so now that you've seen how we've set up our crew, all the components of it, here's what it looks like actually setting up our final crew, pass in our agents, we've done that a million times, pass in our task, set up our process to be sequential, which is just means we don't want to manage our agent or anything like that. We just want to execute the task exactly how they've come in right here. Okay, now what we're gonna do finally, and we're gonna run this in just a second, is we're going to allow our users to type in their questions into the terminal. So like, hey, what would you need help working on? What would you like us to generate and talk about in the report? And then we're going to, once we have that string input, we're going to pass it in in the input going into our crew kickoff, and that'll run everything for us, and it'll just spit out the results. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and actually start running this crew, and I'll walk you through what's happening under the hood as it runs. And just to make it easier to see what's going on as we run this crew, I went ahead and split the screens, and I wanted to show you how you can actually go ahead and activate that poetry environment that we set up earlier. So all you have to do is once you're in the root directory of the project that you're running, so in my case, you can download this from GitHub, but all you have to do is just run poetry install that's just no root and that'll get it installed. And I've already done that. So what all I have to do is I just have to run poetry shell. And what you'll notice is it'll change my base environment over to the new environment that we just set up. So that's super awesome. And now we can go off and actually run the crew. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to walk you through play by play of what's going on. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room. Okay, cool. So the first thing we're going to do is navigate to the proper folder. So we're in the PDF example, and then we're just going to run Python main dot and sorry, I messed up Python one dot crew one. Perfect. Once this is running, what it's gonna do right out the gate is go ahead and actually install and go ahead and parse through that PDF that we passed in. And you'll see it here in just a second. It'll say we're adding stuff to a Chroma DB, which is gonna be a little weird. And you might be wondering like, how does it know to go off and actually insert everything into Chroma DB and do all that rag stuff that we talked about at the beginning? And that's because the PDF search tool is actually at the top of the file. And because we're running everything from top to bottom, the first thing it's going to do is check to say, hey, have I ever seen this PDF before? Well, I haven't. So what I need to do is go off and go ahead and chunk it up, embed it, put it into my Chroma database or my vector store so that later my agent can ask questions and I can give them back answers to really go ahead and supercharge our agents. So what now that everything's set up in our vector store, we can easily go ahead and ask it questions. So which section of the report would you like to generate a work order for? So this is where we're at right now in the code. So I can go ahead and say, I wanna get a, I would like to generate a work order for the roof. Now what it'll do is it'll go ahead and start running through, our agents will start running, and I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna slow it down just so you guys can see what's going on. So it's pretty cool, because we're using a tool, and this tool, basically our agents know how to use the tool. So in our case, it's saying, hey, I'd like to search a PDF as the action, the inquiry, or the query, is the roof. So it was smart enough to know like, hey, I wanna look for the roof, and then it's pulling out information from our vector store that relates to the roof. So you can see like, hey, the roof is touching this structure. We recommend trimming it. And then it's just gonna keep going through different parts of the document to figure out more and more information. So now that we have some information about the PDF and what's going wrong, it's gonna swap over to the next agent or next part of the crew, which is going to be going off and writing an email. So in this case, this is part two, where the second agent is writing an email and it's gonna hopefully include our name in the bottom of it. So you can see like, hey, we just did an inspection report and it's awesome. It was smart enough to figure out actually which house this is and we identified several issues that would need your exp expertise. So you can see like it's all related to the roof. So that is super cool and yep, it signs off our emails properly. So what's awesome is as you wanted to like dive into building more complex crews, you could go off and actually, yeah, you can see, hey, here's the, the final results. I just logged it all out at the bottom so yeah so yeah dear contractor and go off and email them but what's cool is you could eventually start to set up more advanced crews using some of the more advanced features inside of Cray AI. so you could do kickoff for each which you know, is going to kick off a bunch of crews to work in parallel and you could actually go ahead and like do something fancy like this you could say i would like to generate one report about the roof and I would like to, oh, I'll just show you guys what it looks like, just so you guys can see what's possible. So you could generate one report about the roof, and then you could generate another one about the electrical. And what's super cool is now in Crew AI, all of these different 
crews, it basically will just, for each input, it'll spin up a completely new crew to go off and perform the same result. So imagine you were helping out a real life real estate agent, you could basically just have them pass in the report and then you could trigger off, man, we're gonna run this for the roof, the electrical, the plumbing, and they instantly get 10 emails, which would have taken them forever to, to make on their own. So this is a super cool use case, but we're not done. I've just showed you the basics of how this can work and I wanna dive into showing you how you could actually start to do a little bit more customization for a lot of you developers out there who like to use the free model. So let's go ahead and start looking at the second part where we're gonna start using custom models and embeddings in our crews. All right guys, so welcome to the second part of this basic example. And what I want to do in this one is just quickly show you guys how you can start to customize your PDF search tool. And I think the best way to go about this is just explain like why you would want to do this. And then let's actually talk about like how we're able to do this and like talk about the underlying tool. So first off, why would you want to do this? Well, the main reason you would actually want to like update and configure your PDF search tool is because sometimes you want to have a little bit more control over the embedder and the way we respond and retrieve data. So when it comes to the embedder, if you think about OpenAI, it actually costs money to embed data. So if we have a chunk of text, OpenAI will go, sure, we'll happily embed that for you, but it's just gonna cost a little bit of money. And then, well, what we could do instead is just say, hey, I'll do all the embedding locally on my own computer. And that's exactly what we're doing here in this example. We're updating our PDF search tool to say, hey, I want to use the Olama provider, which is just an open source tool that allows us to run LLMs locally. In this case, we're just going to run an embedder basically that will actually take in text and then convert it to an embedding. And the next thing that we're going to do is like, well, certain times you are actually more, you'd, you'd rather use different LLMs, whether it be for speed or for accuracy or for whatever reason you wanna change up different LLMs, well, that's exactly what you could do here as well. So in this case, we're just going to use the Anthropic example, and we're just going to specify that we want to use this Anthropic model. Okay, so I just threw a lot at you guys, and just like why you would want to do this, but let's, let's actually dive into like how this all works. So under the hood, everything that we're using when it comes to like any crew AI tool, is actually using embed chain. Like if you actually dig into the source code, you can see that we're using embed chain. So what is embed, embed chain? It's really just an open source framework that just makes it super easy to interact with your data. So in this case, we're gonna be working with a PDF. And what's awesome is they actually have a ton of great tutorials for you guys to kind of see all the different ways you can config working with embed chain. So when we were just talking about changing out all of our different embedding models, well, we could have come in here and looked and see like, well, I'd like to use Olama. And when I come down here, I can see like all the different ways I can configure this. So this looks exactly like ours over here. So we have the embedder, provider, and the model. And that's exactly what we have over here. Just there was in a YAML report. Ours is over here in a dictionary format. And the same thing for our large language models. You can see all the different ways that you could use and set up the LLM associated with your embed chain app and retriever. And you can see this is exactly the same thing. If we want to use Anthropic, same thing. What is the provider? What's the model? And then you can change up some of the other different parameters as well. So this is what's happening under the hood. And one of the important things to mention is to use Olama. You actually need to have Olama installed. So you can see I have Olama up here and you can do things like Olama list to actually see that, oh, I already have Olama installed and I have a bunch of different models already downloaded. So you can see that this all mini LM, it's actually went ahead and downloaded over here. So it's super small, super fast. So that's why I went ahead and did it. And then Anthropic, we're going to be, I went ahead and actually used and set up an Anthropic account and set up an API key. So it's gonna go off and handle everything for us. So that's what's happening under the hood and it works the exact same way. I'm not gonna rerun it for you guys. I just wanna show you how I know a lot of you guys have are particular and want to use a lot more free and open source so that you have a lot more control over all the RAG applications and LLM applications running on your computer. So this is a great way to customize everything and you can come up here and do the same thing just like this. Yeah, so all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this second part where we dove deeper into customizing your models and embeddings. So let's go ahead now that we have a great foundation, let's go ahead and move over to the next part where we're gonna start diving into this bigger and more advanced tutorial and I'm super pumped to show you guys what we're gonna do. So welcome to the second code example in the RAG deep dive. And I am pumped for you guys to go through this section. We have a ton that you're going to learn here. 
We're going to be covering building your own tools. We're going to be covering using RAG with multiple data sources. In this case, we're going to be using YouTube and the web. You're going to be learning how to use Firecrawl, which is right now the best agent scraping tool. So you're going to love to learn that one. I'm also going to show you a sneak peek of how to use Replay, which is one of the newer Core AI features that was just dropped. Shout out to Lorenz for building this. And then we also have a bunch of other things that I cannot wait for you to see in this code tutorial. And per usual, what we're going to do is because there's a ton of information that we're going to be running through, I'm going to start you guys off with going through it at a super high level like we did the last time. And after that, we're going to start coding it up. So let's go ahead and start going through this, this chart that you see right here. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive into this monster diagram that I've put together for you guys. And we're, don't worry, we're going to take it part by part. But before we do, let's just talk about like, what the heck are we trying to build here first before we dive into all the, the parts? Well, at a high level, we are trying to build a YouTube sponsorship crew. Now, the purpose of this sponsorship crew is to go off and do research on YouTubers so that we could help sponsorship companies connect these YouTubers over to basically different brands. So what this crew is gonna do is be able to take in someone's YouTube handle and with Crew AI, it's gonna go off and do a bunch of research for us and then it's gonna spit out at the very end all the information it can find on that specific YouTuber, like their name, if they have a Twitter account, a LinkedIn account, and everything else that a sponsorship company might wanna know, like their topic, video topics, and some other stuff, just so that they can like really speed up the research process and hopefully, eventually, connect more YouTubers to companies that want to pay for some sort of brand partnership deal. Okay, so enough at a high level, let's take this part by part and talk about what's happening. Um, that way, whenever we go over to the code, you'll know exactly what we're setting up and you'll know what's coming down the pipeline. Okay, so per usual, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be building a crew. And in this case, we're gonna be taking in a YouTube handle like B Hancock underscore AI, my handle on this YouTube video. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pass this handle over to the scrape YouTube channel task. So everything in blue is the a gonna be a part of the crew and everything above it are gonna be tools that we're building for our, our crew. So in this case, we want to scrape YouTube channels so what we have done is we have paired the scrape agent with the fetch YouTube URLs tool. Now, all this is going to do is interact with YouTube and it's going to say, hey, I want to find the five or 10 latest videos attached to this YouTube handle. And we're going to do a little bit of magic and you'll see in a little bit how we're going to structure these outputs. So we're going to be able to collect the video title, the video URL and so forth. That way we can have a list. And what we're going to do once we have all those URLs and a list is we're going to pass that over to our next task. And this is going to be our process video task. And the whole point of this task is to go, okay, thank you for passing me over those URLs in a list. I am now going to make sure that I add each one of those YouTube videos over to my RAG database. So what it's gonna do is take in those 10 videos, chunk, basically pull out the transcript, and then it's going to pass the text of the transcript over into our database. And this is just gonna set us up for later so that we can actually ask questions against those YouTube videos. So cool, check. Once we have actually taken in the URLs and stored everything in our vector base, we can now start going off to the part where we're actually gonna start performing RAG, meaning we're gonna start trying to pull in or pull down information from our vector store. And this is where we're going to kind of set ourselves up for the what the founder of Korea, Zhuo, kind of introduced to me the other day. And it's basically the follow up and fallback method. So basically what we're gonna try and do here is we are first going to have a task that's gonna do its best to find all the initial information about our YouTuber. And you'll see we have a special schema that we're trying to populate. You'll see that once we actually hop over to the code. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our best to find all the initial information that we can. And what we're gonna do is then go into something called a follow up task. Now that follow up task is going to look for all the blank spaces that we weren't able to capture about our YouTuber. So like, oh darn, we weren't able to find their LinkedIn URL or their Twitter URL or their email in this initial search. So let's actually get a little bit more hyper specific and actually dive deeper into populating the missing data. So this just from Joe's experience, he said like, this is like a really good, depending on the source, like a 90% solution. And then this really helps people bump up from, from the, like that 90 to 99% accuracy. And then I've added in something that I'm calling the fallback as a final catch all. So like we found half the information, we found the other 40% and oh darn, we're missing that last 10%. So what we're going to do is use something called a fallback task. And it's just going to say, 
darn, I couldn't find the information in YouTube. I'm now going to use the fire crawl tool to go off and scrape the information to find the specific missing pieces of information. Maybe find that last LinkedIn URL. And then that way, once we're all done, we have all the information we could possibly need about the YouTuber and we're gonna print that out as a final result. So. As you can see, at a high level, we have a lot that we're about to do. We're gonna be setting up our own custom tools. We're gonna to be using Firecrawl, which is the best scraping tool right now for agents. Outside of that, you're gonna see how we can implement that follow, um, follow up and fallback approach when using RAG and a bunch more. So let's go ahead now and hop over to the code and we're really just gonna start building this out part by part by part so that you guys can become RAG experts when it comes to building out your crews. So let's go ahead and hop over to the code. All right guys, so now that we're in the code, Code, the way we're going to approach this is we are going to look at the agent task and tool for each part of the crew that we just ran through a few seconds ago this right here we're gonna go part by part by part so it all makes sense as we build along and you understand why we're doing exactly what we're doing okay so let's go ahead and dive into the first one which is going to be our scrape agent now the purpose of our scrape agent that you can see over here is, is their job to go off and find YouTube videos. And we basically just give some information on like their backstory of who this agent are, is and their overall goal. Then we get a little bit more descriptive over here with our task that we're assigning to this agent. And basically what we say, it's like, hey, it is your job to go off and grab the latest videos from the specific YouTube channel, get all the relevant information and ensure the information comes directly from these YouTube videos don't make up any information. So that's basically what we're trying to do. We're just trying to scrape information, scrape from their YouTube channel. And specifically, we're going to use string interpolation and say like, hey, this is the YouTube channel that we want you to go look at. And the reason we're able to do that is because when we kick off our crew, you can see that this is the exact same key that we have right here. So this is how we're basically handling our string interpolation. All right, so then the part that is important next is we define which tools we want to use for this agent and task. And in our case, we only want to use the fetch latest video tool. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this so you can see how this tool actually works. And I'm super excited to walk you guys through this part because this is this is going to be a custom tool that we're creating for our use case. Because remember our overarching goal of this part of the process is to just fetch the videos, the five latest videos associated with the user. So it's up to us to give our agent a tool that can perform that task of fetching the latest videos. So let me walk you through this part by part and it kind of explain what's going on so when you're off on your own, creating your own tools, you'll understand what's happening. The first thing is we are going to be creating the tool and this is going to come from base tool. Now base tool is how in Crew AI you go off and create your own custom tools and this is the perfect way to like if you really need fine control over what you're doing, this is how you wanna do it. You wanna inherit from the base tool. All right, so let's walk through the key components of this real fast and talk about why they're important. So when it comes to a tool, we need to give them a name and a description. Now the reason why is because we want our agents, whenever they're trying to solve a problem, if they run into a problem, we want to give them potential solutions. And the name and descriptions define what this tool can do. So whenever the agent is like, hey, I need to find YouTube videos, and we say, well, this tool allows you to fetch the latest videos, the agent goes, oh yeah, that's exactly what I need to do. I'm going to pull that tool out of the tool belt and actually start using it. So that's why we have to define a name and a description. And then once we are, are inheriting from base tool, they actually give us some flexibility and allow us to define what inputs we want coming into the tool and what outputs we can expect to get up. This is awesome because we can really make sure that our LLM is providing us the exact information we need. And in our case, that's going to be the URLs and IDs of the videos that we want to eventually download and scrape. So let's talk about the first one, which is going to be the inputs coming into this tool. So if you click on the inputs that we're creating, so this is nothing more than a pedantic base model. So that's what you're seeing right here. We're just creating a, basically a schema of a model that we want to pass into this tool. And there's just two properties we want. We want the YouTube channel handle. So in B Hancock AI, the channel you're watching right now. And we also want max results. Basically, this is just a field where the agent gets to decide, do I want three videos, 10, five? And we're just gonna say the base uh, default value is 10. Cool, so that's what's going into this tool. Now let's look what's coming out. So if you look at the output, you can see that all we want is a videos property that is nothing more than a list of video info. 
So you might ask, well, what is a video info? Well, this is once again, another custom pedantic model that we've created with a few key attributes, the video ID, title, publish date, and video URL. This is all information um, that we're adding manually. You'll see later down below how we're doing this, but feel free. You could also add additional information in here. Like I think there's like some view counts and other stuff like that, other information you could add, but this is all we need for our case, which is just grabbing the latest five videos and downloading them. Okay, well now that we understand what the tool is, what's going into it, and then what's coming out of it, let's actually get into the meat and bones of it where we're actually doing the action. So anytime you're working with base tool, you have to define this underscore run function. And this underscore run function is going to take in two properties, in our case, or two parameters, which are the exact same parameters we defined up above. And then we also get to define our return value. And it also just happens to be the same return schema that you can see right here. So what we're doing under, what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to be using the YouTube API to perform the search. And this really comes down to two phases. Phase one is we just want to validate that this channel exists. And the second part is we want to then make sure that we actually, we actually wanna go off and pull down the five videos associated with this account. So here's how we're doing it. First, we are creating a request. So here's our endpoint, the Google API. And next we're saying, hey, here are the parameters that I'm looking for. I'm trying to look up a channel. Here's the channel handle. That's what we're passing in in the parameters right up here. And then our API key. And immediately after we run through this function, I'm gonna show you guys how you can go and create your own API key on YouTube so that you can copy and paste this code and it'll work for yourselves. All right, so once we have set up our URL and parameters, we can then go off and make a request to actually get that information. We're then gonna just check to see if there was any errors, raise for status, do we get a 200, do we get a 500, an error? And then from there, what we're going to do is look through the response that we get, look at the JSON response, and we're going to get items. If we don't get anything, we're just going to set the default value of an empty array. Then we're just gonna say, hey, did I get back a channel? If not, if I didn't find anything, then this obviously wasn't a valid channel, and we're just gonna raise an error. So, and then we'll get some, we'll send that error back to, to our LLM for it to process. However, if we did get back some information, well then we know, all right, cool, it was a channel. Then what we're going to do is follow up and make a second request. Now this request is, once again, going to use the channel ID. So in this case, we found, we found the handle, we got back an ID. Now we're going to use that ID plus our max result of how many videos we want. And we're gonna start to get back video data. And that's exactly what's happening right here. We wanna get back video data and get it from order by date to where we want the latest videos. Once again, we're going to pass in our API key. That's mandatory to make a request. And we are gonna go off and make that request. Then it's up to us to iterate through each one of the items we get back and pull out the specific information we want. So in our case, we're gonna get the video ID, the title, publish date. And as we grab all that information, we're gonna start appending it to our videos list. So you can see right here, we're creating that video info class, or we're using the video info class to create a new object that's gonna get passed to our videos list. Well, why is this important? Well, because if you remember our final output, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be videos that includes a list of video items or video objects. So that's exactly what we're setting up right here. And this is super important in the grand scheme of things because once we have these latest videos and we pass it to the next agent and next task in our crew, we obviously want to download all the videos that it finds based on these video URLs. So that's what's coming up next, but you'll see that in just a second. For right now, what I wanna do is actually just show you super quickly how you can start actually grabbing your own API keys so you can start making these requests. So let me head over to README so you guys can see exactly what you need to do. All right, guys, so here's how we're gonna quickly set up your API so that you can start making requests over to the YouTube Data API version three. So the first thing you're gonna do is click this link right here. What it's going to do is take you to a page that looks just like this, and in, this is the first time you're using Google Cloud, uh, Cloud, <laughs> Google Cloud Platform, you're going to need to first create an account. Once you create an account, you'll need to make a project. You can easily make a project by clicking this little drop down and saying new project. And once you've done that, it'll then show a button right here that'll say enable. But because I've already set up the API, mine says manage. So just make sure you enable it and you see manage. Fantastic. 
Now, once you've done that, the next thing you're going to need to do is create your actual API credentials. Now, these are secret keys. It's super, super important that the keys you create, the API credentials you create, you keep them to yourselves. Don't share them. Don't post them to GitHub. I'll show you how not to do that in a second. But so click that link. Once you do that, it'll take you to a page that looks just like this. You're going to click create credentials, click API keys. Once you do that, a little pop up is going to appear with your API key. Make sure to copy that API key and then follow the instructions right here. You're going to copy it and then you're going to update your .env file and you're going to set it up as YouTube API key. You're going to hit enter and then you're just going to paste your keys right here. Right after the equal sign is where you're going to paste in your keys. Fantastic. Now, the reason how these keys are going to be safe is because in the .getignore file I've set up for you guys, I have it to ignore all environment variables that are just set in both of your different folders. So I have env files in both of these, but you notice they're gray and not tracked by GitHub or by Git. So that's why that's happening. So, okay, cool. Well, enough of that. Once you've set up that and posted in your dot environment variables, your API keys, you're good to go for the first step. But now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next stage where we're actually going to start scraping and actually pulling out all the information from those latest YouTube videos that we just found. So let's go ahead and hop over to the next part. All right, so now we're in the second step where we're actually going to take in the inputs from our last crew, which includes all the video URLs. And now we're going to start actually using the vector database agent in the process video task to start adding or to start downloading and adding those videos to our vector store. So. How does this work? Well, our agent that we're going to set up is like, hey, your goal is to add YouTube videos to a vector store, get a little bit of background information. And then the most important part is the process video task. Now the process video task basically just like, hey, you are going to be given URLs. It is your job to extract the video URLs from the previous task. And then I want you to add them to the vector database. That's basically all you're here to do. And the important part is we give these tasks and agents this tool, add video to vector database tool. Now, if you actually look at this tool, once again, this is a custom tool that we've created. So let me quickly run you through what's happening. Just so when you're going off doing this, making your own tools, you're going to be confident and be able to crush it on your own. And uh, I do just want to mention real fast, it is super important to realize like we are running tasks. So like this task will always run and spit results out to the next task. And it just so happens to be the outputs of going into this is going to be that list of videos. Basically, if you remember earlier, whenever we had, let me show you this, it's basically just going to be this data object right here is what's going to get passed over into this, into this crew. So it's super cool that we can like actually create objects and pass them around. So that's just a cool part about Crew AI. But all right, enough of that. Let's actually get back to how the heck are we going to add videos to our vector store? So what we're going to be doing is in our custom tool, once again, we are going to say, what is it and what does it do? And we're going to define our input schema. And in this case, all our input schema is going to be is just a video URL. And when it comes to our return schema, all we want to do is just say like, hey, did we successfully add it or not? That's all we're here to do. And the way it works, we are per usual just going to update our dot run, or excuse me, our underscore run method, pass in that video URL. And what you'll notice is we're instantiating this thing called app. Well, what the heck is app? Well, if you look at it, app is nothing more than embed chain. And that's exactly what we were showing earlier when we were going through the code example number one, where I was showing you guys how to like to configure the different LLMs and the different embedders it was we were using embed chain. So what all we're doing here is just setting it up locally. And we're saying, hey, embed chain, I would like to add a video, a YouTube video specifically, with this URL to the vector store and you doing all of your magic, please just handle it for me. And as you can see, like it does, this is crazy that all we have to do is just pass in the URL, the video and the data type and embed chain will know how to handle everything else for us, actually go and download the video, chunk it up into a bunch of small parts, embed it, and then save it to our vector store. So once this part runs in the code, I'll be sure to point it out so you can see exactly it doing its magic. So I think you'll be super excited to see that when it comes. All right, cool. So now that we have knocked out this part, what we can do is head over to the next part in our, in our crew, which is going to be actually performing the first rag request. So let's go ahead and start heading back over here to our code and updating that. 
All right, so now we're in the third step of our crew. And in this step, like I said, we're going to start actually trying to pull out information from our vector store so that we can find information about the YouTube sponsor that we're trying to, to learn about and eventually contact. So what are we doing agent-wise, task-wise, and tool-wise? Glad you asked. So when it comes to our first agent, what are they doing? Well, they're just a general research agent that analyzes YouTube channels and gathers required information. And then we just you know, kind of define who that agent is and we give them a tool, in this case, the RAG tool, which we'll talk about just in a second. The important part is the task that we are assigning to that agent, which is going to be the find initial information task. So what you notice is I'm saying like, hey, your task is to fill out this content creator information model with as much information as possible. Now, where the heck did I get this model? Well, also a fantastic question from you guys. It comes from up here. So this content creator info, this is the object that I'm trying to return at the very end of the crew. Like once I get all the way out here, this is actually the object I want to return because it's gonna contain all the information I need to go off and either contact the creator, figure if they're a good match, or basically pass them over to maybe send them an email, something. It's up to us. But what we can do is I basically just copied a small version of that to say like, hey, your job is to go off and find this information. So I just copied all the properties in here and then I defined a little bit more specific information for the test. Like, hey, if anything's missing, leave it as none. And this is super valuable because like we have set up all these properties as optional. So obviously they can be a string or none. They could be a Boolean or none. So this is the important part of like, hey, leave it as none because later on we're going to follow up to find in missing information and then we're gonna fall back. So we have to leave it as none. Also, don't make up any information. This is super important as, as you're doing all of your RAG applications, please, please, please make sure you specify, don't make up information or hallucinate. Only use information that comes exactly from the queries that you're making. And that's basically what we're doing. And then finally, we give a few suggestions for this task. How do you execute your job? So this just comes down to like good prompt engineering and kind of running the crew a few times and realizing like, hey, this crew is doing a really bad job or this task is doing a really bad job of finding out this information. And then you kind of had to think to yourself like, how would I as a human go off and search this vec uh, vector store? And I would look up like, if I'm trying to find the person's name, the person might not specifically say, hey, my first name is Bob, well, what are they going to say? They'll probably be like, hey guys, my name's Brandon, or like, hey, it's so and so on the channel today. So that's kind of how you have to train your agent to think, oh yeah, think from how a person, a first person, a video where the person's talking in first person would introduce themselves. So that's basically what we're kind of educating the prompt on right here. So, all right, I hope that makes sense. So the two parts I'm going to be showing you in this are going to be the tool that we use so that we can go off and make requests. And the second part is this output pedantic. And I think the output pedantic is what I should show you first. So what we can do with a task is we can make sure that it gets spit out in a specific format. And in our case, I'm going to make sure that you spit out the creator content info class that we have above. So this, this model right here, is gonna get passed out of here. It's gonna get passed out of here over to this one, and once again, over here to this one. So we're just slowly building up the model, passing in more information as we go along our, our crew. So I think that's super cool that we can do something like that. And the next part is we're going to give ourselves the RAG tool. Now, the RAG tool, this actually comes directly from Crew AI. So we're, we're done building all of our custom tools. You guys are a professional at that now. But if you go over to RAG tools, what you can see, I'm in a weird directory, but that's just cause like, hey, this is coming from Crew AI tools and this is the base model. But when using Crew AI, when using the RAG tool, basically what's gonna happen, if you like dig down just a little bit more and look at the underlying run function, cause this is, the, this is how they're handling it, you can see that what they're doing is they need the query parameter. So that's the question we're gonna ask against our vector store. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass that query in over to adapter, query. So if you look under like, what the heck is the adapter? Once again, the adapter is just the embed chain. So self dot adapter is an embed chain. So it's exactly what we were using beforehand when we were going off and setting up our vector store with our YouTube videos. We're just still using embed chain for everything. But now instead of building up the vector store, we're actually going to make requests and queries and retrieve 
information from our vector store. So that's exactly what's happening. And that's why we're passing in the rag tool. Okay, so now that you've seen that we're at this stage to where we're making our initial requests, trying to build up that model with all the information about our creator, what we're gonna do is now that we've checked that block off, we're just gonna go ahead next and start looking at the follow up task and everything around that so you can understand like what we're trying to do and why it's important. So let's go ahead and move the code over to that. All right, guys, so now we're in the follow up portion of this crew. And if you remember back from our initial graph, the purpose of our follow up task is to find any information that was not found in the initial search. So the reason why this is such like an important technique as you start to build more multi agent solutions, trying to do rag techniques is if you think about your first agent, it's going to basically do what react agents do. And if you're just hearing that term for the first time, it stands for reason and act. So it's going to think about what it needs to do and then act. So I need to find this information, act. I need to find this information, act. However, as with current LLMs, they basically have like limitations with like certain like, hey, my context window is this, and then they kind of just get lost, lost in the sauce after they've like made so many requests and they kind of get confused. So we have found if you perform a follow up to like really dive deep and kind of like restart the process of searching for information. This works really great. So like just the great example is like, let's imagine we were searching for information in a PDF. Well, the first initial request would find 80% of the information and then the follow up would kind of like really hone in on the final 20% of data that's missing. So it's exactly what we're trying to do here. And we just are basically codifying ex exactly what we're saying. You are the follow up agent. Your job is to find any information. You are just super diligent and thorough and basically just like hyping them up on letting them know what the kind of person they are. And then the follow-up task itself, we're basically just saying like, hey, you're gonna be getting this information. You're gonna be getting this model. And we want you to perform additional searches in the vector store to ensure completeness. And basically kind of reiterate what we said again, just to realign and readjust our multi-agent framework to really stick to what it's trying to do. So that's, that's what we're doing next. And what you'll notice is two important things. Important thing one, we are still using the rag tool. We're not changing anything up. We're just saying, hey, you did it once, go look back, do it again. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. And once again, we are going to output the same model. So we're just slowly throwing in more information and passing it down in assembly line. That's all we're doing here. So I think now we're at the final part where once we have now taken an initial stab and a follow-up, we're now gonna head into fallback where in case we didn't find the information, we're gonna fall back to another route. So let's go ahead and hop over to that part of the code right now. All right, guys, so now we're on the final part of our advanced rag deep dive. And in this part, we are actually going into the fallback portion. Now, just to reiterate, the fallback is the final safeguard or final check, our final Hail Mary. If everything wasn't found in our initial two attempts, this is like, hey, well, that didn't work. We tried our best. What do we want to do instead? So in our case, going over to our graph, what we're trying to do is we're going to go, well, it wasn't in YouTube. We tried our best to find all the information, could not find it. So what we're going to do is set a backup. In our case, we're going to be using Firecrawl, which in my opinion is the best a route for scraping the web right now. They do an amazing, amazing job. So let me go ahead and like kind of show you as we're going through this, what is Firecrawl and why it makes it, what makes it so awesome. So the first thing is we're going to set up our agent per usual and we're just gonna say like, hey, your job, you are the fallback agent and you are going to be searching the internet for any missing information. You're just super meticulous and go off and good luck. Now, the important part is the task. So the task you are, once again, you're gonna be performing a final check. Hey, if you couldn't find the person's information up to so f uh, up to this point, I'm just gonna give you a refresher. You are trying to find information about this YouTube channel handle. So B. Hancock AI, go off and find what you can about this guy. And it is your job to take in the model that, you was, that was passed to you and fill it out. Don't make up any information, but do your best to fill out this information. And what's super important here let me go ahead and close out of this is we are starting to use the fire crawl search tool. So this tool, once again, it's going to come from the crew AI 
tools section. So I'll have a link to it down in the description below in case you wanna look at all the tools, like I mentioned earlier. But the main thing is this comes built in so you don't have to do anything. You can just use this tool right out the gate, which is awesome. And like everything else that you've seen so far, it incorporates a dot run function. And in this case, it's just gonna take in a query and maybe some page options of like, oh, go to page two, or here's the kind of results. So super cool. Our LLM will do all this for us and go off and search the internet for us and pass in our query. And it'll really make up its own queries. Like, oh, it looks like we're missing this guy's Twitter handle. I wonder if we type in B Hancock underscore AI Twitter, if we'll find something. So Firecrawl and our LLMs are smart enough to work together to find the information, which is so cool. So what is Firecrawl and what is about to happen? So the first thing is, Let's go over to Firecrawl. So like I said, Firecrawl, it basically makes turning websites or scraping the web with our agents or our LLMs super, super easy. And as you can see, you can start getting 500 credits free per month, it seems like, which is insane. But the part that's awesome and what makes Firecrawl, Firecrawl so easy is like, they'll go off, search a website for you. They've already done all that in the back end and then they'll return back to you raw information that's super readable and accessible to your LLMs. So in, in our case, that's exactly what we need because we want to know the person's LinkedIn, their Twitter handle. Like we just want clean information and Firecrawl makes that super easy. So what you're gonna do, definitely not sponsored by these guys, I just love their tool, but what you're gonna do, sign in, click dashboard. Once you're on their dashboard, you'll be taken to a page just like this and you're going to want to set up an API key. So what you can do is just once you have your account, you'll just come in here, copy this API keyed and take it over to your take it over to your .env file like we've done with everything else and you're going to paste it paste it in there. And the important part is when it comes to setting up firecrawl, what you need to do, I believe I said this up in the readme fire. Yeah, basically you'll just want to set up your readme. I'll go ahead and show you guys what you need to do. Over here in the .env, you need to just say, yeah, firecrawl API, just like that, and you'll be able to paste your secret key right here. Okay, cool. So once you've done that, you guys are officially good to go and you will be scraping everything off the internet. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and run this tool for you guys, this entire crew. And as it's running, I'm gonna be talking to you guys through it play by play, just so you can kind of help connect and see the agent in action with the code we created so you can hopefully connect those final dots together. Cause this was, you guys have put a ton of hard work. This is a ton of new topics and we're about to tie it all together here in this next part where you're running. So let's go ahead and start running the crew. Okay, so now we're in the fun part where we get to see all of our code in action. So what I've done over here on the right side, I have our terminal set up. I have poetry shelled into our proper environment and now it's up to me to run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start writing the code and once again, I'm gonna give you play by play on what's happening and explain just, yeah, everything that's going on. And yeah, so let's go ahead and start running it. So we're gonna do Python and we are just going to run crew.py and what this should do is start asking us which YouTube channel would you like to parse? So in our case, I'm just gonna put in mine, B Hancock AI and then let's go ahead and run it and then this is where we're gonna see all of our tools in action. So the part that's awesome is first off, I need to fetch the latest five videos. So this is the agent talking. So it understands it is planning and, or, and reasoning. I need to fetch the five latest videos for this. I need to use a tool. What tools are available to me? Oh, it's the fetch latest videos for channel. So then it, it's cool because then it'll actually do what's called action input. So it'll break up a sentence like this into what the tool needs. So we're passing in the parameters. So YouTube channel handle, ours, the max result and everything. And then our tool super fast and it gives us back an array of multiple video info. So you can see here, if I look at video info, you can see, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. We get five different videos and each one has all of the relevant information. And this is super cool because this is exactly the last five videos I made. My Lang Chain Masterclass, totally recommend. Put a ton of time into that. I'm sure you guys will love that. It's been one of the best performing videos I've ever done. So I'm sure you'll love it. And it just goes back to see all the rest of my videos that I've been producing over the past year and a half. So from there, what comes back is we have all that information and then our agents will then go, okay, great. I now know all of the, the videos associated with it. Then it starts the, the next part, which is going off and I need to scrape all the information for those videos. So entering new chain 
And yeah, I need to add each of the provided video URLs into a vector database. So we're now in part two, which is gonna be, we're just starting at the top, working our way down. So now we're in process video and we're gonna go task, we're gonna go, sorry, we're gonna go video by video in this task. So we're going to save my LangChain video, success. That's exactly what we told our tool to return if it works. Then we're gonna go save my Grok video, my Llama 3 video. We're just gonna keep saving all of them over to our vector store and we can confirm that it's saved because you'll eventually see this little database uh, folder pop up over here. And inside of it, it has our Chroma database that includes all of our embeddings. So that's exactly what's happening right here. And I've successfully added all videos to the vector store. Check, we are done with task two. Now we're gonna start going into our actual rag retrieval part, we're gonna start pulling information out from all of these videos. Okay, so we are wrapping that up. Great, so now I need to, this is the agent thinking internally, I need to think and gather all the information on, on the content creator, and what it's gonna do is start going through and searching for all the, you know, this is literally everything that I've asked it to go find. So that's what it's gonna start doing. It's gonna start planning out and pulling out information for like all this pink, purple text you see right here is actually response from uh, my YouTube videos. So like in this video, I said, hey, the source codes land in the link down in the description. I say that a ton apparently, because it found it here. So it's gonna go through and keep looking for all of that information. So it's just gonna keep attempting to find all the information. So I'm gonna skip through it because it's just gonna keep trying over and over and over again. Hey, this is our initial, initial search. So that's what it's gonna keep doing. I'm gonna scroll down. As you can see, like the status bar is super low because it's 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 starting to do a ton of work. So you can see so far, I personally haven't said my name in the video. So that's why I wasn't able to uh, find it. So like I need to do a better job actually saying like, hey, my name is Brandon Hancock. But what was awesome is it did, it was able to find some of the core topics. So now it's gonna go off and keep trying to find more and more information about what's going on. So it's gonna take another stab at finding out who the heck is this guy. So we're going to, once again, keep going through over and over and over again. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the next white part because right now we, I believe we're in the follow up section. So what's cool is now it found not only the information from last time, but it was also able to find my first name. So that's just me actually just talking in the videos. It was able to also figure out, do I have a school community? It was, because like at the beginning of this video, I said, hey, I have a school subscription down the, in the link below. Go ahead and you know join and love to have you part of the group. So it's slowly finding information. Now, it just so happens in this tutorial, in this example, my YouTube videos, I don't personally audibly say my bio is this, my email address is this, my LinkedIn URL is this, because most of the time it's on the screen. So now this is going to go to our follow up part of the crew, sorry, our fall back part of the crew where it goes, all right, dude, we've already looked on the internet to find, we've already looked through all the YouTube video to find this information. And now we're gonna go back and fall back to the internet and I'm gonna start searching for for you. So you can see like it's going to query with Firecrawl my YouTube channel and start trying to recursively explore and scrape the internet to find all the information. So let's go ahead and scrape, keep searching to see what our fallback tool was able to find out about us. As you can see, this is a absolute ton of information trying to find it. Yeah, all right, so cool. So let's actually look at this final part because it looks like it did a fantastic job. So it looks like the fallback with Firecrawl was able to find my name. It was able to find my last name. From there, it did a great job of like, yeah, that's exactly what I talk about on my YouTube channel. I mean, right now we're watching this and we're doing that and I just released a video on that. So that's awesome. I teach builders how to build full stack AI applications. That's exactly what is set up in my school account. For whatever reason, I don't know whose email address this is, but it usually does a much better job. Like we need to add a validation part to this, just like, hey, just do a double check. However, everything else is 100% correct. Do I have a LinkedIn URL? Yes, if you actually go ahead and click this, it'll take you over to my LinkedIn account. If you click this, oh yeah, it'll take me over to my Twitter account, which is just popping up over here. So yeah, you can see all the information about me, it was able to find it, which is so cool. Like this would have normally taken like 
a, a good 20 minutes of like clicking around to find out 20 minutes, but it would take a long time to actually figure this out, put together a nice bio, cover all the topics, especially if we had to watch through all those YouTube videos. So I hope you guys are like, man, that is freaking cool that we can build a crew to go off and scrape all the information for us and then put it into a nice condensed format that makes it easy for us to take action on it, which is the part that is so cool about AI. Now, what I wanna do next is I want to show you guys how you can start using one of the new features of Crew AI called Replays, because as you could see in that last example, we did not find the information we wanted because it had my email incorrectly. So what I'm gonna try and do is show you how you can start using Replay to actually go back and try and say, hey, that was not right, I wanna try it again. So let me show you that real fast. All right, guys, I am super excited to show you the new replay feature, which is a part of Crew AI. And before we dive into seeing how cool this new feature is, I just want to mention a quick caveat about replays. And what I want to mention is Crew AI right now is split into two parts. There is the old way of creating crews, which is what we've been doing here, just because it's super simple to create and demo. Then there is the newer way of creating crews in Crew AI, which is the YAML format. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'll be doing a ton of videos about this new YAML approach of creating crews. But what I mean by YAML, basically what's gonna happen is we're going to be, the other style of Cray AI is to use YAML files to where you actually will define like task and you'll define all the descriptions in basically a YAML file. And basically all this is gonna do is allow you to set yourself up to use a lot more of the Cray AI CLI features we've been setting up for you guys. And also it makes it super easy to start deploying your crews to the cloud and setting you guys up, setting you guys up for Cray AI Plus. So that was the quick caveat. And the reason why I bring it up is because replay, which we're gonna learn how to use in just two seconds. Right now, in order to replay, you kind of have to come in here and manually update your code to replay from a task. But just know, if you are using the updated schema of Cray AI using the YAML format, you can actually do all this from the command line saying like Cray AI replay and then the name of your task ID. Super, super cool to see it work, but for right now we're actually just gonna use it the, the code manual way of right now. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and actually kind of break down what's happening. So what we're going to be doing is using the command line interface to go off and look back at the latest crew that we've ran. So right now, if I type in crew AI, you can see, because I've already have this dependency installed, what it's gonna do is it's gonna come back and show me all the possible commands that I could run. And this is kind of what I was talking about, how you can replay task. Well, right now you can't replay task unless you're doing the YAML format, like you can't use the CLI replay, but what you can do is you can actually log outputs. So I can log my previous task outputs, and this is gonna be super awesome because I can see like, oh, task five was making sure that we grabbed all the content creator model info and ensure that it's accurate from our search. And what's cool is because, as you remember in the last section, this didn't work. So what we can do is we can copy and paste this task ID and then come up here and paste it into our code. And what it's gonna do is it's going to go off and actually it stored all the outputs from the previous runs, previous task, and now it's just gonna replay from this one part, which is great because now we can go like, oh, this part keeps breaking. Well, cool, how can I replay it and maybe tweak some things? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So now that we have properly commented out our run, because all we're gonna try and do now is replay from a specific task, what we're going to do is I'm just gonna type in Python, Crew.py or crew.py to go off and kick off our replay. So if any of this was confusing, don't worry, please drop a question down in the comments below or hop over to school and I'd be happy to help. I know this is brand new. We're gonna have a lot more documentation coming out for you guys, but I just wanna show a sneak peek just to show you guys what is possible. So let's go ahead and clear all this out make this bigger and I'm gonna go ahead and run it for you guys. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go kick off the crew, look back and populate all the existing tasks that we've already ran and then now it's just gonna start up from where it la uh, last ran, which was going to be the fire crawl. Cause if you remember that was the fifth and final step inside of our crew. So now it's just gonna go back and start looking to find all the information and actually find the correct information this time about who I am, how to contact me. So we're just gonna give this a few seconds to run and whenever it's done, we'll just have it pop back up. 
All right, guys, this is super cool. It just finished running the final task where it went off and started re-scraping the internet to validate and find any information that we couldn't in our initial four tasks. So as you can see, it now worked like a charm. It was able to find my YouTube handle added that, but most importantly, it was able to go off and find my first name, last name, what I make videos about, bio, email, and everything looks great LinkedIn and Twitter wise. So all around, this was perfect. So I hope you guys can kind of see like this replay tool is pretty, pretty awesome, especially whenever you want to like just quickly retry like, oh, is my task working or is it not? Hmm, maybe let me just quickly tweak the prompt a few different times to see if I can get this working more accurately. So I hope you guys see how this is super powerful. And if you have any questions, please drop a comment down below or uh, go ahead and head over to school and I would be super happy to help over there too. And so would one of the other awesome community members that we have over there. So thanks guys. But that's a wrap for this video guys. I hope you all learned a ton about using RAG with Crew AI and you'll have to definitely keep me posted as you go off and build your own projects. And just as a quick reminder, go ahead and grab that source code completely for free down in the description below. Also, if you want support or to meet other like-minded AI developers, also check out that free school community. More on that and down in the description below. But enough of all that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you in the next video. See ya.